day and a good morning to you all, or good afternoon, where, whatever time it is out there. I'm so happy to be with you today. I'm very, very, very excited. And uh, we just have some wonderful things to share with you that are going to help you as we go into this next year. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? This is 2000 and what is it? 2013. That's right, 2013, and we're going to have a great year. We're going to share some things with you today that you're really, really going to, going to, going to like, and I want you to pay really, really good, good attention to it because I want, first of all, to show you a little two-minute video Joan and I made about, I'd say, 15 years ago. Now, I want you to watch this because it's got some very important things in it. The amazing thing is of our philosophy, purpose, and plan. We talk about that. We used to do this when uh, uh, we'd have vi visitors. They'd show the video when the visitors come, and also when, when, when some of our groups uh, would come in. So I want you to watch this. Pay attention, because I'm going to ask you if you've got the, the three or four of these things. Okay? Now, here we go. John and I welcome you to our Premier Home Office. It, it was in November of 1985 we founded Premier Designs and developed our philosophy, our purpose, and our plan. Our philosophy is that God created every person with value. We believe life's priority should be God, family, and then career. And of course, people are our most important asset. And our purpose is to enrich every life we touch and provide a way to find identity, achievement, and success and to meet personal and financial needs of our people. In 1986, we started out in a small storefront office with 300 jewelers. Through carefully controlled growth, our operation has expanded. Today, we have many thousands of jewelers in the field. And the Premier Designs Home Office is a 100,000 square foot building on 12 acres of land. An additional eight acres will allow for future expansion. We've been at this location since 1993, and as you tour today, I hope you'll notice our efforts to put people first. We live in a very technical world, and we do use the latest developments in hardware and software to help serve our people, but we're also committed to keeping it personal. That is right. That's been my passion, right. keeping it personal. Our objectives have always been to honor God, to help people enrich their lives, to pursue excellence in service, and to grow profitably. When you arrived at our offices today, you entered through the Hall of Flags. These flags represent the countries that we've been involved with in our ministries and projects. You'll be visiting our chapel, which was built in memory of my mother. It's a daily reminder that when Premier was founded, we dedicated it to God and wanted to honor Him while serving our people. Joan and I are amazed at what God has done and continues to do through this company. We just love America and our desire is to reach out and touch lives, telling people that God loves them and that we do too. And now, did you really watch that picture? Did you see Joan in there and Andy and wasn't she pretty? That was about 15 years ago. And we were there talking about what? Our philosophy, which you don't, I wanted you to know. Our purpose which I wanted you, 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 you to know. And I just want you to know these are the things that were set in 1985 when we formed our company. It's just, a, just amazing. Then when you've seen that office, that storefront office with about 2,000 or 3,000 square foot, we had five employees, counting Joan and I, and we had a part-time telephone operator who was pregnant and one time on the phone when I did answer it and we all had to answer it at times but we didn't have that many calls and what uh, what what the guy I told the guy he's talking to him on the phone and I said to him oh yes we have a part-time pregnant part-time pregnant operator and he said to me what part of the time is she pregnant and I told her well all day as far as I know but we did, in those days, can just have a wonderful, wonderful time. But look at us now. When you look at the buildings as you see and as you saw them, what God has done, Joan and I had never, we didn't have an, a, a clue 
what God was going to do. And what he has done he, he was his plan for us and for you. And he has blessed that as we move along and as we go into the next very important thing. It's about Joan Horner. I want to tell you, she has some what you would call very important things. They're, they're passionate to her. You remember what they are. Uh, well, one of them, you know for sure, keep it personal. And now the other one is called integrity. You're going to hear her talk about this. Listen to this very carefully, this video, and you'll understand uh, why Joan meant so much to us. And, and, and she was, as you know, one of our spiritual, I think, uh, basic foundation. And what she was to me was a great, great wife, mother, and a sweet, sweet person. Watch this. <clears throat> you try and get up and follow that. That's hard. <laughs> Thank you so much. In 1985, after many weeks of prayer and after speaking with several counselors, Andy and I made the decision 22 years ago to begin a new company. We were, <clears throat> we were certain of our decision, and because we knew we were doing the Lord's will, we moved ahead, not counting the cost. No, not cost in terms of money, but in terms of time and its demands on our lives from that day forward. We were excited because of our purpose, which we knew beyond a shadow of a doubt was given to us by the Lord. He had led us to travel to Bolivia, to Argentina, and to Uruguay, where we saw the unbelievable needs of the poor, both physically and spiritually. What an assignment we were given. So we began in November of 1985. Our philosophy, our purpose, and plan was written. In July of 2007, our philosophy, our purpose, and plan remains the same. <laughs> to honor God, to serve people, and enrich the lives of all those we meet. Our first opportunity presentation was held in Madisonville, Texas, and it was a huge Disaster. <laughs> the meeting room was next to the bar, and it was difficult for the guests to re resist visiting that bar. Needless to say, the meeting was short lived. We had many questions that night, but not a doubt. We remained committed to building our small company. We grew and we finally built some leadership. And our senior leaders numbered eight, plus Andy and me, and then 10, and then 12. We were moving. Our first rally, we had 63 attend. <laughs> but it wasn't long until we had hundreds of jewelers, and now thousands. How exciting. And we were able to begin supporting missionaries in other countries, building orphanages and youth camps. The Lord was opening our eyes to more and more needs. What a thrill it was to see God's plan unfold before us. In July of 1990, we attended a Bible conference at the headquarters of Word of Life in Scroon Lake, New York. While there, we received a telephone call that was forever to change Premier Designs. We were told that our then president and his wife told a meeting of our jewelers in Charlotte, North Carolina, that Premier was going out of business. 
they were told to join them in the formation of a new company, which had been done not only at our office with many of our people, but it was done with our catalogs and with our money. Nearly half of our jewelers went with them, and it was a huge blow to our jewelers who remained with us. Andy chose not to retaliate. His silence proved to be more powerful than any words. We recommitted ourselves to enriching lives, and actually we had a brand new company and a brand new start. Some things are hard to forget. Betrayal by those we trusted was particularly painful. But I do believe Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. God used that <clears throat> for good. <clears throat> he purged the premier family, and the result was a strong foundation remaining of committed people. And I want to thank you again, all those who are here today who chose to be loyal to Premier's purpose and plan back in July of 1990. You are the cream of the crop, undoubtedly. Andy and I will always be grateful for your support and love during those very difficult months. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for evil to give you a future and a hope. So we began again in how God has blessed us. Five years later, in 1995, we had over 6,000 jewelers. And in 2007, we now have well over 26,000 jewelers. He has given us a future and a hope. What an awesome God we have. God has blessed us for almost 22 years, and there are things we must never forget. Number one, our focus for 2007 has been serving with what? Love and integrity. In order for Premier as a corporation to have integrity, those in management positions must model honesty and fairness in their own lives. What about you in the field? Is it any different? You see, you represent Premier, and you may be the only part of Premier your neighbor ever sees. Your personal integrity is on the line, but as a representative of Premier Designs, the company's integrity is also on the line. I shared with you in January some thoughts I had about integrity. So we're going to talk about an ethics check. Now, I think most people basically know right from wrong. The first question should be, number one, is it legal? I'm not only speaking of criminal law. This is really regarding company policy of honesty and integrity. Number two, is it balanced or is it fair? WIR, WBP. Our founding verse, Proverbs 16, 11, says, the Lord demands fairness in every business deal. Number three, will it make me feel good about myself? How would I feel if it was published in the Dallas Morning News on the front page? Would I like my immediate family to know about it? Could I mention some temptations that you need to be alert to and aware of? Letting the hostess have a $25 gift certificate for having 10 people present when actually there were eight people, one baby and one dog. <laughs> not turning in home shows for several weeks or not turning in home shows at all. Our golden guarantee is a very generous guarantee, but please note this is not a lifetime guarantee. And making catalog purchase plan orders into a home show, is that legal? Is that fair? Is that truthful? 
In reality, there was no home show. There were no invitations, no real hostess. I don't believe anyone would feel good about themselves if they're being dishonest. Do you keep your promises? I hope we all do. That's very involved in being honest. When you tell someone you will pray for them, do you keep that promise? Better not to say it if we're not going to pray, isn't it? A broken promise makes us a liar. Do you ever have a home show that didn't quite reach the minimum of $100? Well, you say, that's easy to fix. I'll just go sell a ring and add it to the home show order, and it's all okay. After all, you're doing it for the hostess. That makes it right, doesn't it? No one will know, and your motives are good, but you know, and you have lied to Premier. You've deceived the company, and you've caused Premier to be something less than the truth. When was the last time we agreed to do something for someone? Have we followed through in our commitment? Integrity means that we are people of our word. Integrity means we are trustworthy when we speak. Integrity means our hearts are right. We keep promises even if it hurts. When bills come due, you pay them. We are dependable financially if we have integrity. Integrity means doing what is right in the right way. There's no right way to do wrong things. Remember our slogan, W-I-R, W-B-P. I suppose all of these hypothetical issues seem far-fetched to you all, don't they? Unfortunately, that's not so. Please do not make promises that cannot be kept. Please return telephone calls to hostesses and your customers. That is keeping your business personal and one of integrity. No one enjoys being ignored. Be sensitive not to interfere with a fellow jeweler's customer or a prospective new jeweler. It is just best to avoid anything questionable. Do the things you know are right. You might say, oh, well, Premier will never know. Premier doesn't care. I hope I can impress upon you, all of us here tonight, that you are Premier. I am Premier, and we are all Premier. We represent Premier to all with whom we come in contact with. Our objectives, our philosophy is to honor God, to serve people, and to enrich the lives of all we contact. God examines our hearts and rejoices when he finds integrity there. My own slogan besides WRWBP is one I have held to since we began Premier to keep it personal. That means it's to be done in person, alone, by one person. Underneath this is relationships, friendships, giving of yourself to others. That doesn't just happen, does it? We must work at friendships and relationships. It's one of the things women generally do best. Without friends, I'd think my life would be not complete. Our friends become real treasures. A perfect definition of friendship is this, turning complete strangers into friends. That's what friendship is all about for all of us. Isn't that cool? We all begin as complete strangers in here. And by keeping it personal, we make lasting friendships. That is the personal touch. Women need women at all stages of their lives. We all need that personal touch. We need, other, we need other gals to come alongside and speak our language. We learn from each other while not realizing that or even understanding it. We worked with thousands of women during our years at Home Interiors. When we left in 1984, Andy was tired and emotionally drained, as he's told you many times. I was devastated. I had withdrawal pains, very severe pains. My personal relationships with many of the groups from Portland, Seattle to Chicago, all the way to Tampa, were abruptly severed. 
I hurt badly, and there was nothing I could do about it. I needed a good dose of that, good dose of that personal touch. God did exceedingly above anything I could have asked or think. He turned premier jewelers who were complete strangers into my friends. The friendships in premier have richly blessed me. And I believe God used that event in my life to show me the importance of the personal touch. I have long encouraged handwritten notes. There's such a friendly, heartwarming feel when you read handwritten notes. To be very honest, I rarely feel warmed by emails I receive. The words just are not speaking to me personally. They're cold and calculating. I agree that it's acceptable in a business environment, of course, but emails of that nature do not build personal relationships. People are not computers. They do not encourage strangers to become friends. Even the attempt to write a smiley face is sideways. <laughs> and to me, that's not personal. <clears throat> there are several ways for us to build personal relationships into strong friendships. Of course, the first personal contact, enjoying each other's company face to face, is the important one. My personal mission in Premier is very simple. I have committed to keep the culture of Premier on a personal level from top to bottom and from side to side. And I'm asking each one of you to help me keep it personal. You see, I don't really care if Neiman Marcus thanks me for using their credit card, but I do care when I receive a thank you note from Marie who sold the hosiery to me. She didn't have to do that, but how much that meant to me, that personal touch. I want you to seriously consider committing together to keep Premier Designs as God's instrument of service, sharing and caring to keep that personal touch. Will you join me? Thank you. Thank you. Yes, there are things we must never forget. We have a special program with our new designers, and this is the first step in leadership, and we bring them to Dallas for a weekend of getting to know each other. We invite groups of about 50, including spouses, to stay out at Haven of Hope, and they hear from different managers and also guest trainers speak to them. And one night, they come to our home for dinner. It is it is there that Andy and I share the history of Premier since its beginning. Now, more than ever, because of our growth, it is so important for them to understand who we are and who you are. You are Premier. We are Premier. We are all Premier. It is important that we never forget our philosophy, purpose, and plan. We are a people-driven company. Our people are premier, and that is you. You are premier. We represent premier wherever we are. I love it when my jewelry is recognized as premier in some faraway city. It gives me more responsibility, however, as I represent premier. Will I impact people in a positive way? Will I be an influence for good? If we are premier, then what we say, how we look, what we do all directly relates to our positions as a representative of premier designs. You are premier. We are all premier. Nothing feels better than doing what you know is right. The question is not who is right, but what is right. Our slogan for years has been WIRWBP, what is right and what is best for Premier. Who is Premier? You are Premier. We are Premier. The buck stops with Andy and me. We set the tone. We motivate by example. If we're not careful how we act, if we forget for one minute that we are Premier, then we just can't expect you to follow in an acceptable manner. I want you to remember that we are all Premier. 
there are things that we must never forget. Where we've come from, serving with love and integrity. Remember that you are premier. We're all premier. Remember to keep it personal. Of course, we need product and we need programs, but most of all, we need people. We need you and you and you who want to serve and to share. My sweet friend, Mary Crowley, whom you've heard so much about, made this statement. Life is no brief candle for me. It is sort of a splendid torch, which I've got hold of for the moment. And I want to make it burn as brightly as possible before handing it on to future generations. We are all premier, and may our torch keep burning brightly. We are all premier, and these are things we must never forget. I love you all so much. Thank you. Now, I hope that you really did enjoy uh, seeing that. And the two things that Joan was talking about and what she has a passion about is integrity. Now, let me tell you about integrity. Integrity is when we tell the truth, when we're honest and we want it's so very, very, very important. And I think more companies have failed uh, because of their <clears throat> not telling the truth. We've had integrity for 27 years and I, we're going to have it. And her other passion, as you know, keep it personal. People are the most important asset that we have. That's you all out there. Thank you for what you have done and what you will, will be doing because we've had a wonderful 27 years and we're expecting to have a wonderful 28 years. And uh, while I mention this, I want you to remember something now. What, you're gonna, what you read and what you hear on TV and all of this stuff is, is gonna, uh, I'm, I'm telling you, will affect you one way or the other. Good things don't make news. I, we had a group one time, I called the, the television station up and said to them, hey, we got a couple of thousand young people here on a wonderful, wonderful meeting. We've had no, no papers, no TV, no nothing. Up at SMU, they got three guys running around with a sign of protesting something. Do you know what the guy, he told me at the station? Mr. Horner, he said. Wasn't that nice to call me Mr. Horner? Mr. Horner, he said, good things don't make news. So be careful what you listen to because all you're going to hear, all you're going to hear are, are mostly bad things. Do you know that they talk about <clears throat> uh, unemployment? Do you know that unemployment right now is around 8.2% according to their statistics? And do you know that means that 91.5% percent of the people are working. I was down the, uh, just the other day to one of the malls here, and I know it's Christmas time, but you cannot find a parking place. They're parked up on the lawn. And I'm telling people, 90 percent of them are still working. We've been through this for the past 27 years, and we, the, we can do it again. It will be needed even more, because people are really, really, really getting getting scared full of fear and and they just believe everything that they that they hear but i'm telling you there's a lot of people working and we will have a super super year now to help you plan your year i'm going to be asking catherine and catherine will be on here in a second or two and she's going to read from Jim, from Joan, and she's reading an article that will really give you some ideas and plans that you can think about as you walk into or run into 2008. So here's my right arm, and I, this is the, the lady that takes really good care of me, Kath, Catherine Horner. <laughs> Operation Premier. Years ago, Andy and I became friends with John and Joanne Quartz, who worked with Billy Graham Crusades. John wrote a plan for that organization called Operation Andrew to help people work together as a team. I adapted his plan and renamed it Operation Premier. We are a team here at Premier, and we want to function as a unified team.
There are five steps to Operation Premier. These steps will help you build your business, enhance your relationships, and I think that they'll be useful in strengthening your commitment to God and to Premier. The key word is look. One, look up. We can't have good relationships and build our Premier family without God's help. We must look up for wisdom as we deal with our downlines, our uplines, our sisters and cousins in Premier. Charlie Brown was pleading with Lucy one time to be tolerant and understanding. He said, Lucy, you must be loving. The world really needs to be loved. And Lucy screamed back, look blockhead, I love the world. It's the people that I can't stand. We've all felt like that at times, but if we get in the habit of looking up, we can find that we have a helper. Look up and pray for help. Look up and pray for wisdom. God is faithful. He is big enough for any need we have. Two, look around. In God's providence, he has placed you near all the people in your life and in your premier business. Look around and be alert to needs. Recognize that every jeweler has strengths and weaknesses. We all have needs for security and recognition and for belonging. We all have responsibilities other than premier. Other jewelers are just like you. That ought to change our perspective, right? So look around and see things from another person's perspective, from your hostesses, your jewelers, your friends and your family. It will make a difference. Three, look out. This doesn't mean to be aware of or to watch out for. Rather, it means to be on the lookout for ways to build relationships. Be on the lookout for ways to encourage and to minister. Our express purpose in Premier is to serve others and to enrich lives. Maybe someone needs a hug or a smile. Maybe they need to help with booking or hostess coaching. Are you willing to be on the lookout for those needs? Four, look after. Stay close to those whom God has entrusted to your care. I really believe that he has placed certain people in your Premier family for a purpose. After you have looked up and prayed for them faithfully, and after you've looked around and looked out for needs, then you can look after them. You can be available with practical help and concern. Are you willing to expend the energy and time that is necessary to look after your relationships? And five, look forward. Look to the future, set goals, write them down and tell someone what they are. Make a commitment. Someone has said that our business is like riding a bicycle. Either you keep moving or you fall down. Be faithful to that which God has given you and always look forward with hope. The future is as bright as the promises of God. The Bible says, The eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to Him. 2 Chronicles 16.9 What a great truth! Our Heavenly Father is looking out for us his watchful care for us is consistent. So keep looking up, around, out, after, and forward. Doing these things will not only build up your team, but it will also build up your life. Thank you very much, Catherine. That was awesome, I tell you. You did a, did a wonderful job reading that. But I'd like you all to know, if you have a gems from Joan book, that's page 113. And I want you to go and read it if you have that and read it, read it not just once, but twice. And when you're, don't be looking back, don't be looking too far ahead. You look up and trust the Lord as you're building this business. Joan uh, was so, uh, explained it so well. And I want you to be sure that you, you really do, do get that. But just before we close this off now, I want to talk to you something about what you believe. Because out of your belief comes an attitude, and out of that attitude is, is going to be something that's going to decide whether you make the year a great one or whether you're not going to have a great year. And I want you to think about and plan and know and remember that you can have a great year. No matter what they say, no matter what is being done, I'm telling you, there will always be people that we need to go in, people we need to, to give, give, people we need to give them hope 
And as we go into the homes of America, there's never been a time, a, 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 a time in history that I can remember when hope is so, so needed. So I want you to understand, yes, we can have a great year of 2008. It depends a lot on what you're going to look for, look at, listen to, and think. But you remember what I said, 90% of the people are working there. Yes, and if you'll make the calls and you do the work and you go into those homes with, with, uh, with uh, service and you go into those homes giving and you hope in your heart. And one thing people need today is hope. And we have that hope for them. In, as, as, and you can talk to them about it. So I want you to re remember, remember that, that you can have a good year. Now, I want you to say that. Say that. You can have a good year. Now, I didn't hear it, so say it again. Now, that was better. And I want to just to tell you that we just thank you for all you have done, what you have done in the past, what we're going to do together in the future, the lives that we're going to touch, the people's needs that we're going to meet. God is going to, going to be blessing us. And, you know, Two years ago, amazing, when Joan went to be with the Lord, and she left us so much, and, and, and she, she was, as you know, married for 65 years. God was so good to us. But I want you to understand that she really had a passion, and I'm saying this again, a passion that people are the most important. Keep it personal keep it personal and i believe it will really still help our company to be in this direct sales business and we're a direct service company one of the best in the whole nation we have the best marketing plan we have the best hostess plans we have the best people in you but as i think about joan the the, the very day that she went to heaven God gave me a verse, and it was in, in, in Isaiah 41.10. 41.10. And it says, Fear not, I, I, fear not, for I am with you. I will help you. I will strengthen you. I will uphold you. Don't be dismayed. Don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. And the reference is 41.10. 41.10. Isaiah 41.10. Don't be discouraged. Because God says he's going to give us the, the, his strength of his right, right hand. May you have a wonderful, wonderful year. God bless you. We, we're praying and God will answer our prayers. May he bless you and your family in every way. And thank you. Thank you for being part of our premier family. And what we're going to be doing in this year ahead, I think, will be really exciting. It will be exciting, and don't you forget it. It's where you look, and you don't look back. We look up, and we trust Christ for the answers. Thank you for all you have done and will do. We love you. Have a wonderful, happy, happy 2013 year. Can I believe that? And I was born in 19... 1924. Goodness gracious me. I'm getting old, but I still love you. And I'm just thankful to have the opportunity to be part of the premier family myself. And no matter what happens, sweet people, we will be trusting God.